You talk a lot about silent stories, both when we're in discussion and that idea comes up in the poem. What, what, what do you mean? Do you want to say a little bit more about this idea of silence in a picture? I mean, pictures surely are silent, and yet your poem, you've given Diallo a voice. I think in most paintings, the, the subjects are obvious, and I intend it to be quite clear what's being conveyed. Uh, the painter, often in great portraiture, to say, this is what I want you to think and feel. But this portrait, whether by accident, whether by design, whether by the conjunction of so many things that came together, conceals as much as it reveals. There's a very acute relationship between the image that we see and all the unsaid things around it. So many people, so many absences, as people keep saying. There are not that many portraits that just suggest so many living stories behind it. One of the lines in the poem that really draws me in, I think perhaps because I'm a historian, is the, I have worn history around my neck like chains. And when I, when, when I read this, or when I read this now, it always makes me wonder whether the voice you've chosen for Diallo is both a historic voice and a voice of a man in the 21st century. If you like, the social life of the object, looking back on its whole... History. Trajectory, yeah. Trajectory because we interact with it very much now, it has to be a voice that projects across time and speaks in time as well, I, I felt. Um, I felt that's one of the things that portraiture does, uh, that it carries itself constantly across time. It, 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 it's a, it's a, I keep referring to it as a kind of um, um, the most perfect form of time travel. Ex it's a living presence. Yeah, it's a living presence, but it's, it's time that constantly travels. It's a, a moment in time that constantly travels, and in doing so, changes its own time that's contained within it, mm -hmm. and ours. It makes us aware that history is not entirely objective in itself, because we have this tradition that history can be fixed, but these make you aware that you, you, you can't. You're dealing with a perpetual subjective. ambiguity. Yeah, and, and history a is a subjective interpretation. He's an unusually real subject of a portrait. And I have always felt, with my kind of knowledge of 18th century portraiture, that the artist, who was actually at the very beginning of his career, um, was actually free to explore Diallo and, and to be with Diallo and to uh, experience him in ways that he could never have done with a, a, you know, an elite white male sitter. You know, you know a prince, a king, a judge. There were conventions. Because Diallo sat outside of those conventions, although he was a man of, who was respected and but admired, I think that this is a much more modern portrait of a real man than many historic portraits that we see. In all of our conversations with people in, in Leicester, South Shields, Liverpool and London, we, 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 we found how differently people respond to this portrait and how it repays our visit, our gaze, over and over again, we find different sensations, different thoughts going on in the portrait and coming out at us. I think it's because it's a portrait that receives. There are many portraits that are intended to, to impress something upon you, but this is a very receptive portrait. For me, one of the most important things about this whole project is actually finally to do with looking. Looking at a, a life, uh, an image, for a long time without judgment. Um, because I think we judge too quickly and we look too briefly. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if we looked deeply, we would find so many things so much harder to do um, and so many other useful and wonderful things, maybe easier to do. Um, and I think it would be great to bring back the art of looking. great deep looking again.